There are so many games, you will never have time to play all of them. But don't worry, we have the best ones right here. In this video, we're gonna list our favorite board games of all time, as of 2024. We each individually ranked our games. Take one game, place it head to head against another game, choose which one you like. We did that with a bunch of games. It was mind blowing how many games we did. Yeah. And now we have the best games of all time. There's tons of surprises for me. Okay, let's get to it. Number 10th game of all time ever forever this year is... Three, two, one, War of the Ring. War of the Ring is a two-player competitive game which simulates the books. One plays the free folks, the other players play the dark side. And you fight against one another where one player wants to either destroy the ring, which is most likely thing you can do. The hobbits can secretly go and uh, throw the ring in the Mount Doom. Or you can do the military victory, which is unlikely, but maybe. The other player wants to either corrupt the hobbit, ring bearer. Or uh, he wants to win the combat and he can do that by capturing strongholds which is not gonna be an easy task free folk whenever they die they remove them from the map and they never come back while the bad guy can just make a factory of them if you see the movie monsters. you just produce them in this exactly. weird place you also roll dice and those dice will let you do actions uh, and it's a card game where you play cards on your turns and they have events and uh, you can move these armies i love Lord of the Rings, as you might know, but I recently played it again and it's still so good. Thematically, it so well represents the it theme, is, it, is, um... it feels amazing. Mine's Android Netrunner, a game about hacking systems. It's an asymmetrical card game. So one player takes the corporation or the runner and the other player takes the other side. You're trying to either win by stealing agendas from the corporation or the corporation is trying to win by completing agendas or just killing the hacker. It's a fantastic fantastic competitive card game. How you build your deck makes the game different. There's a lot of bluffing to advance the agendas. Corporation has to install them in a server and the runner can just run at the server and steal the card, simple. So you have to install protection like icebreakers and firewalls and things like that, that the hacker has to kind of run through and hack. Sometimes you maybe just put a card there and it's a trap. Maybe he's bluffing, maybe that's an agenda. You don't know. I hadn't played it for a very long time, but played it the already previous year. I just remember how great it is and I wish I could play it more. It's one of the most unique designs I've ever played. Good 10th game, will the 9th be as good? No, it will be better because it's mine. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works? That's how it works. We actually already did 20 to 11 for our supporters and if you want to become one, you can see that video. You can support us here on YouTube or on Patreon. And why am I having this long intro and telling you this? Because Yanis is already depressed how many games fell out of his top 10. Which those are? I guess you'll have to see the video. Two, one, King's Dilemma. That has fallen slightly. King's Dilemma is a story game uh, where all of you represent one house and it's basically Game of Thrones simulator where all of your houses have their own interests in the world, how they think the world should look like. Each turn, turn around one card that gives you a small story. Boy went to a market and Stoles. stole some grapes. What you want to do with them? And then all of you, using your powers, and based on your actions previously, you will have more or less votes. I vote three power for that we punish the kid. You vote 17 power not to do that. I yell coward and try to convince everybody else to go with me. That's basically the whole game. And based on the decisions you make, you create the country. It's a heavy fantasy theme game. There are, well, I'm not gonna spoil anything, many fantasy theme things happening there just this discussion and back and forth and screwing everybody over going like yeah i'm gonna vote for that and you don't fun game if you get together people that are really into talking and, and just uh, some role playing maybe yeah, some and i still remember the people that betrayed me i'll keep that to my grave yeah. i i was also that. betrayed at the very finale yeah me too i was 100 sure i will come out on top yeah. and then the person i least expected from betrayed me. Don't, don't trust your friends. Mine's Eclipse. You have your own unique uh, faction where you are exploring space, improving your technology, and there's ship combat where you fight each other by rolling dice. But there's a lot of interaction, there's a combat, and you can customize your ships. If you like the space theme, conflict, and some good Euro, great game. And dice chucking. Number eight, three, two, one, Spirit Island. Final girl. 
Final Girl is a solo only game where you play the final girl and essentially you're a hero of a slasher movie or a horror movie where you have to kill the big bad guy or multiple bad guys. And if you do, you win. If you don't, you lose. Simple. You run around, you try to save victims, you're trying to get stuff to survive, running away, then again attacking. Each of those sets kind of parodies an already existing franchise like Aliens or Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th. It's just a lot of fun. It isn't a very long solo game. It's relatively easy to set up. It's very random. That's why you don't like it but I'm fine with that. Even losing tells a story and it's always exciting, especially if you like the horror genre. The opposite of random spirit island, where basically you all play spirits of an island and intruders come. And start to live in your island, pollute most importantly, and you try to stop them by making your presence felt and literally moving your presence to the island, getting stronger and using your cards abilities to destroy them, frighten them. And it's very tactical. You have to work as a team and you have to play the right cards at the right time, figure out your unique spirits mechanism. What makes it tick? The tricky part is a lot of those cards are something that you play, but they will trigger only a bit later after the yeah. bad guys go. So you have to calculate what will happen in the next turn and if the card that you play will be the most effective. Or well, a lot of forward thinking, which I love. Let's move on to number seven. Three, two, one. Agents War. Essentially what War of the Ring is to Lord of the Rings, this is to the Star Wars universe. One player plays the Empire, the other player plays the Rebellion. Rebellion has a base somewhere, but it's hidden. The Empire has this huge massive army that Rebellion can't defeat. So they have to hold on as long as they can, because if they reach a certain turn, they win. So Empire is like on a timer. It feels very thematic. You can bounty hunt there. You can destroy planets with the Death Star. You can create all the units from the movies. An amazing game if you like Star Wars is essentially Star Wars in a box. From a big epic game we go to just two sheets of paper. But it's a big epic roll and write. It's one of the biggest and epicest <laughs> roll and writes there is. What you do on your turns is you get a bunch of resources, then use those to fill in your sheets. On those sheets there are different like rows and actions that you can do and each says if you pay this resource you can fill in this. It feels like a big massive game but just in those two sheets and you can play it in an hour and it's so satisfying and I love it. The campaign that challenges each time what you need to achieve to win the game. I played so many times that I kind of have finished it. So it's falling down a bit. Even though I have this feeling that I cracked it, I still want to play it. And just its simplicity is what amazes me. I like those puzzly games where I sit there and just try to figure out, put that pressure on me to Man. find out what's the best way to play. Anyway, let's move on to number six. Sixth best game of all time. Terraforming Mars. Feed the Kraken. It's a Euro game where you get tons of resources, yeah. build your engines. You play this one company that goes to Mars, makes its own like ecosystem. You can play different cards with maybe some plantation that gives you more resources. You have created good living conditions, then the game ends and you see who scored the most points, who terraformed the best. The engine builder at its best. Every time you win or lose, you always feel satisfied about with this game because this is what I built. Feed the Kraken is my number sixth game of all time. Feed the Kraken is a social deduction game where there is a board, there is a ship, we're all on the ship. Some of us are pirates, some of us are sailors, and some of us are cultists. And we each want the ship go one or the other direction. If it gets to the place where we want it to go, we win as a team even if one of us is dead. It's all about the moral guess, victories. Uh, yeah. yeah. Captain and the lieutenant each pick card as a destination. They give them to the navigator. Navigator will pick one of those or will he? He can jump overboard if he doesn't want to go in any of these directions and then pass it back to the captain and captain reveals where the ship goes. Plays less than an hour, sometimes even around 30 minutes and it plays a ton of people. It is definitely a great social deduction game. The game mechanisms takes over the social aspects of the game. Yeah. Everybody we played it almost have really really enjoyed it we have great stories from this game and what else you want from board games yeah, had good exactly. times and good stories three two one number five wow it has fallen well a struggle is a two-player card driven area control it's an oldie full of historical flavor one player plays the us the other plays the ussr during the cold war and you're trying to get either the most victory points or control certain areas and then you automatically win. That's the best thing that I think card games can do is where you have a card and you can use it for its event or you can use it for its points for actions, like multi-purpose cards. It's a great game, what can I say? 
And in Nemesis, you play one of the survivors on a spaceship, and suddenly it appears that there are aliens on the ship. Who knew? And uh, you have to survive. But also, each of you will have your objectives. Sometimes the objectives might be good, something like just find the signal, or destroy the ship. As you move around the ship, make noise, which unfortunately calls aliens to, to come yeah. to you. And it's a big, massive game, a thematic one. Dangers are around the corner and you have to figure out, is he your friend or your enemy? You no. never know. It's, it's essentially alien the board game. Number four. Three, two, Number one. Four. Wonderland's War. That has fallen out of my top 20. Because I haven't played it. Same so thing for me. Last year it was one number one. Because it's an amazing game where you play one of the weird creatures from Alice in Wonderland's story who has cool powers. What you do on your turns is basically pull out tokens from the bag and uh, see what those tokens do. And they usually give, will give you power or some actions, but you can improve this bag. There's also area control where you can send your uh, characters to different spaces and you fight for those spaces, which will give you most victory points. There is also card drafting. You sit around a table like in Alice in Wonderlands and have a tea party. Yeah. And in this tea party, you select cards one by one, drafting them and getting these abilities. These cards mostly will give you new tokens or new uh, power feels so good mashed together it's super fun why it has fallen because we reviewed a game copy that wasn't ours immediately i backed it because i love that game i really really do and i'm still waiting for that more than a year i'm waiting for it i just have such yeah. fun memories uh, it's a great game i love it as well just I haven't played. played it. But what I love more than that is Dune Imperium. And this includes also Uprising. It doesn't matter which one. I like both. They're very really same. -ish. Watch our review where we talk about the differences and which one yeah. you should pick. Dune Imperium is a little bit of worker placement. There is a little bit of deck building. There is conflict where you fight each other. It's all in the universe of Dune. Great tight Euro experience where it's not as strategic, more like tactical. I like it so much that I thought it's gonna be my number one this year, but turns out it didn't. And I guess you like it more than I do because I haven't seen yeah. it yet. Where is it? Uh, Where is it? It was 21st. Nah, so. nah. -uh. Three, two, one. Dune Uprising. So you like Dune Uprising more than the original? For me personally, yes. We talk about it in the <laughs> Dune yeah. review. It's just more for gamers. And when you have played a lot of Dune, the base game, then uh, I think you want more. This is more. I really, really like it. All that you said, enjoyed 100% of all my games. Winning, losing, whatever. It's just amazing and I wanna play it all the time. Hegemony, that's a new one. Came out just last year. It is an asymmetrical four player. Well, it can be played solo to four. Each player plays a part of like a country. One player plays the state, another player plays working class, then there's middle class, and then there's the uh, the people with the money. Capitalist. Uh, capitalist class. People yes. with the money. And each of those is connected as we're part of one country. And if somebody lowers like the salaries that affects everybody else, everything's connected. Everything's connected. It, it's a card game where at your turns you have to play just card. And you can use those cards as the basic actions, which move a few certain things and icons and get you resources. Yeah. Or you can use those as events. Yeah. And those events are pretty cool. There's like, always choices. Which so, which do I do? And whenever you do that, then it goes to a phase where you vote on the policies in the country, which is also really, really fun, depending on how powerful you are. You can vote how big the ta taxes will be. State obviously wants the taxes to go up, yeah. while everybody else kind of wants them to go down, but Makes not sense. everybody, yeah. so you have to discuss. And There's so much table talk. <sighs> Can't wait to play it again. Okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Eon's Trespass. What? It's number two? So Eon's Trespass is this massive game where you are in ancient Greece and huge monsters have come and destroyed all the Greek gods and you're the only ones that can protect the world because you can synchronize with huge titans, they can fight with these gods and that's the backstory of this massive epic game where you navigate through the world of, of Greece with the ship 
you can upgrade the ship. Yeah, there's stories on the ships, there's story on the islands and places you go to. And then there's uh, fighting, boss fighting, everything's there. It's huge, massive hobby within a hobby game. And uh, I will go back to it this year again, hopefully. It's very difficult to get into. The rules are crazy and sometimes you just have to house rule some things. One of my favorite games because of the experiences it gives you. You can go through all the emotions and the decisions and everything. It's a world where you go into and get lost. And I love it about this game. We have a review about it. So watch it if we you want. have a review. I participated. You Play. were there for the looks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My number two is Nemesis. You already mentioned everything about Nemesis. It is a fantastic space horror game with a ton of random unpredictability, and trusting nobody. You have to have that mindset going into this. I'm probably gonna lose. Let's see how far and how long I last. Number one. Three, two, one. Yeah, I knew it. Hegemony. Good choice, good choice. Surprised? I am very surprised. Why, I was surprised why? as well. Why? Why uh, did Hegemony beat out uh, Eon's Trespass? Because it's more accessible, even though it's big and heavy still. Yeah. But it's more accessible, plus also it did something that I haven't seen before. Communication between players and the synergy that you have there, where I feel like, okay, I can figure out how I can get the most resources. What is it? The First way I want to go about this? No two games were the same, which I really loved about it. It really surprised me. And these few first places, to be honest, was just could could be mixed match together. Yeah. All really, really great games, but this one stood out this year uh, for me and it's really, really amazing. And uh, yeah, I just want to play more and more and more. Yeah, it isn't for everybody and it is a long game, but it, as asymmetrical as games go, it's not that hard to teach. Yeah, so talking about heavy games and something that's not for everybody, uh, what do you have there? Oh, I have Here I Stand, which is uh, essentially a six player only political historical war game that I'm wondering what will happen first. You will play one game of this, no. which is give or take 10 hours, the other thing. or me playing through full one act of Eon's Trespass. Oh. <laughs> Better question than I expected. Yeah. Here I Stand is has this huge map of Europe and some of the new world exploration. During 1500s, when the Reformation started, when Catholicism was, uh, you know, not the only ruling Christian... Uh, I'm sorry, when... <laughs> So this happens during 1500s when Martin Luther... Stop it! It's not a history lesson. What is it? When Martin Luther put his 95 Theses on, on the door of the church and that kind of started the Reformation. And each player plays one of these big powers of that time where you have different ways to win depending on the country you are. The Ottomans are trying piracy and the French are trying building beautiful palaces. Each of them is very different. It's a card driven game where like Twilight Struggle, you play a card and you can use its event or use the points for actions. But what really makes it come alive for me is the diplomacy, the negotiation phase. So for example, I could say England, I want to talk to you and then you leave the room and then you come back, both of you grinning, and everyone's like, what is going on? And then the England says, I'm just gonna give one of my action cards to the France. You can have alliances, you can uh, start a war with someone, you can trade cards, and the whole game is a big experience. Those were our best board games of all time, at least for me, and then and the other ones. Well. Let us know what are your favorite board games of all time in the comment section so we know what we should try out. Check out our Patreon. Check out our uh, YouTube members. Just check out our We check out. have our 11 to 20 games there, and you didn't answer the question. So, what do you think is gonna more likely to happen? You're gonna play Here I Stand once? We're gonna be dead before that. <laughs> so, none of these. Mm.